Hello, I'm Jessica Ryan Keeney. I'm a family law attorney. I'm licensed to practice law in the state of California. I am the Department of Child Support Services attorney for two small Northern California counties. I'm also a city attorney for a small Northern California city. In the background, you might hear my son making noises. You might also hear the dryer. Sorry, not a whole lot I can do about that. Anyway, I'm making videos to help people do common things in their family law cases. Please know that these videos are not legal advice. These are for educational purposes only. If you have a question as to whether or not what I am explaining in the video is right for your case, you need to go hire an attorney who's not me to evaluate your case to figure out what's right for your case. Having said that, I know there are a lot of questions about how to do common family law things, common family law forms, and so I'm here to educate people. Today, we are going to learn about serving people electronically by email and how to fill out that proof of electronic service. Here we have a proof of electronic service. It's POS 050. I have a link to where you can find this in the description down below. I don't like to use form numbers. I like to use form names. I don't like form numbers because if someone's describing the form or using the form number and they mess up the number, I have no clue what they're talking about. Actually, if they're describing the form, I can probably figure it out. Anyway, if they're using the form name and they mess up the name a little bit, I can figure out what they're talking about. Form names on all the forms appear right here. I call this section the title block, and they appear down here on the document. So the rules for serving people electronically can be found on the, they're in the California Rules of Court, and it's Rule 2.251. And it's really handy because down in the lower right hand corner of documents, you can find the law that pertains to that document. So I'm not going to go into when proof of, a, or I mean, when electronic service is appropriate, other than to say that the party has to consent to electronic service. For more information, go read the rules of court. So now let's get into actually filling out this form. So I'd like you to note that some local child support agencies will serve and file your forms for you. It's your responsibility as a party to make sure that forms, your forms get served and filed properly. But some local child support agencies, some DCSSs or Department of Child Support Services will do it for you to make sure that they get done properly. So check with your DCSS to find out if they will serve your child support forms and file them for you. If they won't, then these are good videos for you. And even if they will, but you're dealing with documents in a part of the family law case that the Department of Child Support Services isn't involved, these are good forms, or I mean, these are good videos for you. Maybe DCSS isn't involved at all. These are good videos. Maybe you want to get it done to make sure that it actually gets done. These are good videos. Okay, so now with that out of the way, we will say that I am filling this out for myself. But we'll say that I'm filling it out in pro per, meaning that I'm representing myself in the case. So I'm Jessica Keeney. We're going to pretend that I'm not actually an attorney and we're going to put my address. I'm not going to put my actual address because I don't want you guys to send me mail because I might not get it. So we put the address. So the street for me, it's a P.O. box. I'm in Susanville, California. Fill that all out and then we'll put my phone number and you're going to put your actual phone number. I'm not going to put my phone number. But if I were really filling this out for court, I would. I don't have a fax number. I like to put NA or none so that people know that I really have no fax number. And then we got to put our email address. Makes sense since we're serving this by email that we're going to put an email address. And because I'm not doing this as an attorney, I'm doing this as though I'm a self-represented party. 
I'm going to put my private email address. So you need to use the email address that you're going to be serving the documents from and that you are willing to accept service at. This title block up here is how the court and the parties in the case know how to contact you. So make sure that you provide the information that you want the court to have record of so that the court and the other parties can serve you and send you notices. Superior Court for the county of, in this case it would be Lassen, you're going to put the county that you're actually in. You're going to put the street and mailing address of your courthouse. You might have to go look it up. I can't remember offhand what ours is, but I know that it's on Riverside Drive and it's in Susanville. Some courthouses have branch names. Sorry that my camera keeps focusing in and out. I haven't figured out how to stop that. If someone figures it out, please let me know in the comments below. And so if the courthouse had a branch name, we'd fill it in here. Mine doesn't, so I'm not going to fill it in. You're going to put the petitioner and the respondent for the case. And it's the petitioner and respondent are going to be the same throughout the entire case. Let's say that in this one, Lassen County was the petitioner, and then Sam Smith is the respondent. He, in our previous videos, some of them was the, um, was the parent who was paying support. And there's no room here for other parent. In this case, other parent is, is me. If you're unsure, check the court docket to find out. You can also check the forms that Department of Child Support Services sent you. Over here, we put the case number. If it's a family law case in my county, like a divorce, it'll be FL. If it's only a child support case, it'll be FS. Sometimes the cases get consolidated and your FS case turns into an FL case. Double check that you have the correct case number because if you use the wrong case number, then your document will get filed in the wrong case and a misfiled document is as good as a non-existent document. So then you'll put the judicial officer, that's the, the um, judge or commissioner who's hearing your case. If you don't know what the, judici the name of the judicial officer is, that's okay, you don't need to put it there and put the department that it's going to be heard in. And again, if you don't know what department it's going to be heard in, that's fine. You don't need to put it there either. So now we proceed. My residence or, well, first off, I'm at least 18. My residence or business address is. So I want to make it very clear that you, as a party to the case, cannot serve these forms. You have to have somebody over the age of 18 and not a party to the case serve these forms for you. So an attorney can serve them, your attorney in the case can serve them, but you as a party to the case cannot serve them. But what I like to do is I like to fill out this form as much as possible so that I can just hand it to the person who's going to serve the forms for me. So let's say that my friend Jennifer Baker is going to serve this form for me. Well, I've already figured out with Jennifer that she's going to serve this form for me. I'm going to fill it out as best I can for her and leave a few places for her to sign and fill in. So let's say that Jennifer's address is also P.O. Box. Let's say it's 123 Susanville, California. Sorry if your P.O. Box is actually 123 Susanville, California. I'm not picking on you, I swear. And then we need to fill in the email address for the person who's doing the service. So again, this is Jennifer Baker. And you need to fill out the actual email address. This isn't actually Jennifer Baker's email address, but I'm using it as an example. You are going to use the true email address, electronic service address of the person who's doing the service. And then you know what documents you're going to have somebody serve. We're going to say this is a response to notice of motion. 
and I like to put the hearing date because in a file there can be a whole bunch of notices of motion and there can be a whole bunch of responses to a notice of motion and it can be tough to figure out what this proof of service goes to, especially if there are a whole bunch of hearings in close succession. So in this case, I'm going to have Miss Baker serve a response to notice of motion with hearing date 51520 and mother's income and expense declaration. In this scenario, I'm mother. If you need uh, more space to list documents served, then you'll check here and you can use an attachment. So then the person who's going to serve your documents is going to finish, is going to check all of this, make sure it's right. Again, as a courtesy, you're going to fill out as much of this as you can. So Miss Baker is going to serve Sam Smith for me. Now, if Miss Baker were going to serve Sam Smith's attorney, then we would put the name of Sam Smith's attorney and then we would put Sam Smith here because it's the name of the person who's actually served on behalf of, and that's the name or names of parties represented if the person served as an attorney. Then we put the, the email address that they're going to be served at. And this is the email address that the party or attorney has agreed to accept service at. This is going to be the date that the documents get served. In the past, I've seen forms that want to know the time and the city that they're served in as well, but this one doesn't ask for that. So what's going to happen when the person serves these documents for you, they are going, oh, and we're going to write the name of the person here who's doing the service. So the person's going to have the file of all the documents that are going to be served, the notice of motion and the income and expense declaration in this case. And then they're also going to have a mostly complete version of the proof of electronic service. And they're going to email that file with those documents to the person listed here at the email address listed here, which is the address they've agreed to accept service at. So once they email those documents, electronic service is complete. They're then going to date here. This is again the person who's doing the service for you and sign here. And then you are going to file with the court the original proof of electronic service and two copies. And you're also going to file with the court the original response to motion and two copies, and the original income and expense declaration, and two copies. And it's okay if the documents you're serving aren't a response to a notice of motion or an income and expense declaration. You can be having any documents served electronically that you're allowed to. The deal is what you're going to file with the court is going to be the original proof of electronic service plus two copies, and then the original plus two copies of each document that were served. Some documents don't have to be filed with the court. For instance, a schedule of assets and debts. But um, we can get into that another video in another video. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I check in periodically and I'll do my best to answer those either in the comments or in a future video. You need to know though that this is not legal advice. This is how I've seen other people handle it. This is how I've handled it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best for your case. So thank you for watching and I hope this made sense to you. Eventually I will likely have a write-up explaining how to electronically serve someone and when that eventually comes into existence I will put the link so that you can find it in the description below.